Howdy, howdy, and welcome back to my channel. This is Casey, and thank you so much for coming back to my DIY Expedition Camper build series. This is video number 84 in this build series. So there's a lot of videos, a lot more information before this, including also the video right before this, which was building out the composite panels, which are going to build out these garage doors. And that's what we're talking about today. Really big gear garage doors, building them myself to fill out this specialized shape and also this incredibly large, almost four feet by four feet gear garages to support my bikes and everything else that goes in there to have fun while traveling. And of course, this whole camper build series, if you've been following it, started as just a bare bones, two-wheel drive truck, converted to four-wheel drive, a lot of different holes and stuff put into it, and of course, a custom composite camper built to it, and then we cut a bunch of holes, holes for windows, doors, and of course, this big gear garage doors, frame those out, and also built out the two inch wall panels to support the bed wall or and also the bed floor and that also frames out all this gear garage which now we got to put some doors on it so let's get into it for building protection you can see the garage door openings i have right here right they are big no doubt about it they are really really large and so i got to make doors i'm going to fill in the space and also i went with a little bit of an odd shape here and i went into some details on that before but and so that's why i got this cutout it gives me more space in the gear garage it maximizes my space on the bed platform above it so that's comfortable and maximizes my space inside here for my bikes and other gear it's going to go inside here but i've got these really big garage doors they're going to swing up so i've got a really strong hinge it's going to go back here actually it's right here and then i've got of course a frame i have to build in or glue in all the way around here that's going to basically be my weather tight have the seals and create my weather uh, tightness and also the garage door to basically not get pushed in so what I've come up with. Okay, so as many of you know, going back many videos ago, I decided to make my own gear garage doors. And the reason why is because I couldn't buy, I couldn't find any that were already pre-manufactured that were the size I wanted. I say the size I wanted, being big enough to accommodate my bikes. And so anyway, so I had to make my own gear garage doors in order to get the height that I wanted and also effectively the width, which is basically, for the most part, a square with the exception of my lower cutout that's over here. Now, because I had to make my own garage doors, it was a big undertaking. It was a lot of work to not only cut these and get them perfectly fit, and then, of course, build these extrusions all the way around, as you can see. Uh, the, the white material here are the protrusions, as they actually are, uh, which is, a, of course, a fiber-reinforced plastic. Incredibly strong, wonderful material. That's this right here. It is incredibly strong. You, you can barely flex this with, your, with all your might of your hands. It's not very thick. It's only about 3 16 of an inch thick there, a little bit less, about four millimeters at its thickest. And so, it, and it is just really strong, but it's also very light. And of course, it's non-thermally conductive and you can just glue the panels right in. Fortunately, Total Composites had this one, which accommodates their two inch and two inch panel. Check up here, because my, my bed platform this right here is glued right into this piece here, making this whole entire structure incredibly strong. And also right here, another two inch panel as well. So I got a two inch panel here, two inch panel there. The back panels are all these three and a quarter inch panels and the sides are two inch. So it's an incredibly strong little box here, right? Because it's pretty small with a lot of material that we're around, completely all glued together. I went then and glued these in. These are really a two by two inch extruded fiberglass angle, which is in, a, a cut down to one inch on one side. They're incredibly strong as well. They are structural as well. They're a quarter inch in thickness. And the benefit of this material is it's one rated for outdoors. It can handle sunlight. It's not going to degrade from that. It's actually made for being in the outdoors. It's made to replace wood and metal in, the, in outdoor environments. It is structural. It's incredibly strong. And it's, of course, non-thermally conductive and doesn't absorb moisture and of course is for the most part non electrically conductive so it's a very good safe material to use for this these create essentially my backstop for the protrusion that's going to be on the doors that protrusion that's on the doors is this piece right here it will mate right up with these pieces with the seal in between or a couple different seals in between and two different angles and they'll mate right up once I build I have the garage doors now cut 
I now just have to cut all these protrusions and get them all installed in there. So with that little trip down memory lane, let's actually talk about how I actually did glue in this frame that supports the door, helps it seal, and keeps it, of course, from moving inward. And this, I all used fiberglass, structural fiberglass in one by one rectangular tube, as well as two by two angles. Some of those angles I cut down to two by one, and so that I could actually have a little bit wider opening inside. And that was very important to me to keep that opening as wide as possible. And then of course, make sure they were just set deep enough in so that the protrusions that go around the doors would be perfectly set back in. So those doors would be flush with the exterior sides of the camper. That was very important to me. Then after all these have been cut, gluing them all in, and of course they're all adhered in with the appropriate adhesives makes them incredibly strong. They're basically now one big solid piece. And now that all these are all glued into place, there is a frame there for the doors. And now of course the doors, remember those from my last video? Yes, I made up composite panels using fiberglass sheets and also a core of one and a half inch insulation. Well, those fiberglass doors, they have to, of course, now be cut down exactly to these openings. And now they know what these openings are. And then, of course, have to cut these protrusions to go around them. And that's how we're going to make these doors. Part of the project here in that I have exactly the right amount of protrusions to enwrap all the garage doors, the two garage doors, the two very large garage doors. And that is it, only enough. Every cut must be absolutely perfect. And it's all these angled cuts and they all have to go together perfectly. In the last video, I cut all these different protrusions up exactly to the right lengths and exactly the right angles so that basically when they wrap the door, there should only be about an eighth of an inch at the most all the way around all sides of the door, except for where the hinge is. And when I glue this up, I have to get the hinge in first. So here we go. We got to figure out what to do about how to attach the hinge. In place. Right now I'm going to get the final hinge riveted onto the camper and then of course start attaching my hinges and these protrusions onto the hinges and drill the holes for the hinges and rivet those in and then start gluing up the doors onto those so anyways we've got a few things to do Let me show the way that i was going to install them and when i built this up i glued into this protrusion here the actual additional piece of this fiberglass reinforced plastic, right? And I, I glued it as effectively like that. It just adds additional thickness or material here and spreads out strength. The part of why, because I was planning on using a threaded inserts into the bottom here. So drilling up through here, threaded inserts, and then clamping that down with a lot of force that a threaded insert can do. And so that I can have a threaded hole into this. And after, you know, thinking through it and everything else, I thought, you know what, maybe that's not the best way. And partly because they are going to expand inside the channel here and push out that foam. My fear is that it, they may get a little bit obscured from the foam and being able to really press out or really lay completely flat. And also their disadvantage of them is it, I can get them sealed, but not really. There aren't many very options to get them sealed, meaning that there's always a hole for basically moisture or air to get through. Now, granted, that hole will be filled with a screw, but still I didn't want to take any chance that any air moisture would get inside the wall cavity. It's a closed cell foam. It's not going to absorb moisture. So I'm not really terribly worried about it, but just a lot of little things I was thinking about. And it seemed like the better thing to do instead of doing a threaded insert in there, was to use something like a weld nut or a plastic rib nut made for this. But again, I was worried about how it would really expand within that foam, up against the foam. And then of course also, on the same end, how it will fit within this cavity of the protrusion here, because I got to fit on that side where the hinge will go. So these hinges will effectively go across the top, will go across the bottom of these protrusions here like this, and they'll mate the two together so this door can hinge off the wall panel here. What I thought about is just actually using pop rivets, just like Total Composites actually holds together some of their extrusions or protrusion materials in different ways. And it just seemed like it'd be a lot easier to install. They're plenty strong. Their tension and, and shear forces are way beyond what this door will, each one is way beyond what this door will ever place on it. And yet there's gonna be about 20 of them going all the way across there for the full width piano hinge to go across here. That's the way I'm looking at doing it. But my fear is, and it's not so much a fear, it's more something I just need to test, is how will that pop rivet expand up against this be strong, you know, strong enough? Will it deform in any kind of negative way? And the other piece of it too is 
how will it, it affect it once a panel is glued in here. So what I'm going to do is I took one of my cutouts from one of my smaller windows. I'm going to go ahead and glue this in here and, and then test it. Drill some holes and do some tests to see just how it works out. Since I have really no use for this panel, might as well use it as a tester just to make sure everything's going to play out well before you go through all the step of doing it. The total composites protrusion with my reinforcement, try some pop rivets with the foam in there and the adhesive seal and let's see how it works. Let's see how well those really seal up and hold up against what's up in there. Going to find out. So I'm going to get gluing that up and do some tests and meanwhile keep cutting down my protrusions for all this mating of all this wall panel here and then that way I'll have those all cut down ready to go and see if the pop rivets are the way to go or if not I have to go to a different one. While I have this test Okay, as I build out my garage doors now, and I'm attaching the hinges to the protrusions that surround the garage doors, my DIY garage doors. Trying to decide, should I use rib nuts, well nuts, or rivets? I'm going to do a test to decide. So I did do that. I made up this mock-up. I went ahead and drilled several holes. I put well nut, a rib nut, and also a rivet into each one. You can see this little caption here of this small little protrusion cavity. It's a little too small to fit the well nuts and the rib nuts into it, as you can see here. So hence why I decided I'm just going to go ahead and do rivets for the protrusion on the door. And I decided, you know what, I'm just going to do it for all of them. After I tested things out, it seemed to work best. I'm going to go a little more into the details of that test coming up soon, but the rivet and the rivet gun seem to be the best way to go. Here's what I got figured out. All right, let me show you. So I have a line drawn here. It's exactly the same dimension from this. This should be exactly the same dimension for this. I checked that and they are all the way across here. So I drew that line all the way across and then I started to draw some circles where the hinge mounts are. Now they're exactly at two inches so I can just carry those out and that's what I'm going to do. But I want to make sure I got it started. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill all these holes along here. And once I have all these holes drilled, then I'm going to go ahead and put a bead of adhesive sealant along here that's appropriate for the stainless steel hinge. And just a little thin bead to keep any water or anything from dripping in underneath that hinge. The pop rivets I'm using, they are actually a sealed end pop rivet. So you can see there, there's no water that can get through. I want to make sure that to make sure no water, air, or anything got inside of the panels here. I know it wouldn't cause any problems. It shouldn't, but you know, could create a little mold or something if water got built up and held in there. I just don't think it would, but but I was just being a little extra cautious. Now these are also a little bit harder to pull through. They're harder to pull through because they're closed in. They're also hard to pull through because they're stainless, so they're very strong. And also they're harder to pull through because these are a half inch grip. So they're a big grip. And I did a half inch grip because I have about a three eighths grip, almost a three eighths inch grip to get through my fiberglass reinforcement that's on the other side of the protrusion here. Then there's adhesive seal, and of course, on both sides of that. And so I want to make sure I got plenty to go through the half inch work for the other side there. So I'm just going to continue to use it here. Yes, there's a little more work. I have to pump three or four times per pop rivet to get it through. You know, the three eighths inch seems to barely grab, and so I want to make sure I'm grabbing. So, anyways, that's my plan. I'm going to start drilling these holes out, get all the holes drilled, make sure they're exactly in the right place. I'm going to check as I go along to make sure that they're in the right place. And then I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, put that bead of sealant down and start popping these rivets in, start on one end and work down. What I found when I did the other side there is that the hinge flexes, and so you can get a warp there if you get it in the wrong place, and hence it can move a little bit in the wrong place. So I'm going to start from one end and work all the way down or start in the middle and work towards each end as I go. So that's the plan. And this seems easier than it sounds, but actually drilling up the 20 holes in both the protrusions on the door as well as also on the camper itself and getting them all exactly in the right spot because these rivets have very little wiggle room in, in order to make sure that the holes are all perfectly lined up and that the rivets won't loosen up or, or pull out. And so all these holes had to be lined up perfectly. So it's basically 40 holes that have to be lined up on each side. And so I set up a little bit of a jig to go ahead and make really just as accurate as it could be for the protrusions on the doors that I'm building up before I go ahead and install those, get those rivet onto the camper and the doors glued onto those. 
And actually drilling the holes to install the rivets and to mount the hinges onto the camper was a little more challenging than I thought and I kind of had to work out some process to this to make it a little bit easier by the time I got to the second one it became easier. But that's over 20 rivets that are stainless rivets pulled through to each hinge and they're mounted in there and incredibly strong and so these doors are bomber. And if you remember back to the composite panel video, my last video, I went ahead and sanded the edges around each of these doors before I glued on the protrusions, and then went ahead and took the door panels and glued them up onto that upper protrusion, which is already now mounted to the hinge. Put a little bit of shims in there just to make sure that door did not move down, but this adhesive sealant is so darn strong, it even holds these doors up perfectly into that place. But the little pieces of wood and so forth I put in there were just to make sure that the doors did not move down, which they didn't. Came back the next day, and Essentially everything was just bomber and now it became just a matter of just simply holding that door up into place and gluing on all these protrusions all the way around that I had previously cut and so they are glued on with a lot of adhesive sealant they are well sealed on all the way around now and that means these doors are completely trimmed out completed sealed up bomber but yes, there's still a few things to finish up. I still have to, of course, not only paint the doors as well as the interior of the garage and those frames that I built out just to make them not only look better, but just to make sure everything's well sealed up, but also add the seals and there'll be rubber seals that'll go on the inside of the door frames all the way around to make sure they're sealed up from any weather and water intrusion and so forth like that. Now, granted, water cannot get in past the door frames that I built, but the seals will ensure that there is such, you know, water it can get in or ice to build up or anything like that to get in there. And also, you'll notice one more thing that's probably missing, and that is door handles or and or latch. And I'll get a little bit of that in the next video, but there's a little bit of a surprise I have coming up for that on how that's all going to work. And so with that, I want to go ahead and wrap this video up. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and so forth. There's still a lot coming up. Got to finish out just a little bit of the remaining interior cabinet framing. Start installing this electrical system. The battery's already installed now. It's just about wiring everything up. So that's going to be a big thing coming up. I do have to, of course, finish out the spare tire carrier, which you've seen a little bit in this video, and get that thing completely finished up. And I'll share more on that, as well as also the hoist that'll lift that up. And gosh, there's just so much more to coming up. So again, thank you for watching, subscribing, and look forward to sharing more with you soon.